15 and that is some start as well. Novak with just a, a touch longer on court than Taylor to get to this stage. And already you get a sense of what today's all about. The Fritz forehand on the opening point, the depth from Djokovic on the second. Ball. He is hard to get the ball past, isn't he? Because of his anticipation, his court speed and... 30, oh. Called him the AI machine last uh, last match against Adrian Manorino. He was just machine-like and uh, tough to win points against, even with for a forehand this good. see Novak hit that two-handed down the line to Fritz's forehand 18, quite often. 30. I mean, he wants to back away. He wants Novak to go across court so that he can back away and get the forehand. That's where he'll do most of his damage. But he has to move this big frame out to his forehand wing more often. I don't think he's quite as effective. We saw Demonor in Perth give him a hard time there, but a lot with the slice down the line. It's no great surprise to Novak watchers to know that off that second serve of Fritz that nearly 80% of them find the Americans backhand. And he'll be looking to do that again today. This is not a start that Fritz needs or wants. Djokovic. For me, it's important and imperative, really, that he starts well, Fritz, here, and keeps keeps ahead. He's serving first. You don't want to get behind in the first set early. It's It can set a tone. Let's... 
tended to go faster with his first serve break point down, but a lot slower on his second. Oh. 10 kilometers down in general in this tournament for Taylor Fritz. A massive opportunity here for Novak. Brilliant yep. from the American. Well, he took the risk, didn't he? And probably had to. But that was fraught with some danger there. A low percentage shot that he hits perfectly. Gets out of jail. One of the things you have to admire about Fritz is his willingness to keep improving in various areas. He's not the most comfortable at the net, but he'll push himself to get up there when it's the right time. Fantastic outcome. this for a first game. You know, I've got to admit, I thought Novak was coasting there. I didn't think he was printing full out. I thought in, the, in an instant, I thought when I looked at this, he doesn't think he can win this point. He, I thought he was coasting a little bit. But no, how wrong I was. <laughs> what a player. You don't see that too often. That ball, and that's the height, maybe what you talked about, Mark, the, the heat of the day that makes the ball jump a little yes. more. Fairly new balls here, and they're fast and jumpy. So it might take him a while to get used to that. It, that helped Taylor Fritz there with the second serve. The height and the bounce he gets. Not going to be too new for too much longer. Almost 10 minutes long, this opening game. Advantage. For me, so much of the success today, potentially for the American, revolves around that shot. His ace percentage stays the same against Novak as it does against the rest of the tour, his unreturned numbers. But when it comes back, Novak tends to dominate. Well, you don't often see a big serving player, or Fritz has a big yes. serving player, struggle like this too, too much in his opening game. This is a little bit telling. To his credit, he's hanging in there, but Djokovic already giving him a hard time on his service game.
advantage. Fritz. He's done well in the longer rallies in this opening game. Taylor Fritz tends to lose the majority of them against Novak in the past, but he's won four of the six that have gone past nine shots. It's just like a brick wall, Novak. Juice. Did you ever beat the brick wall? <laughs> never bro never beat the brick wall, no. No, me either. We've seen those uh, shots of the wall that Novak grew up hitting against, bullet holes in them. But no holes in his defense so far. Just the one unreturned serve for Taylor Fritz out of 16 so far. been a shot Fitzy that he's been working hard on with Michael Russell and Paul Anico in the drop shot to change up the pattern and just bring something new to some of these exchanges well they were two perfect shots almost that that forehand opened up the court but he played that to perfection so that, that's a great asset if he can win points in a different way there And in amongst this epic opening game, which is now 12 minutes long, a quick shout out once again to Tennis Australia for the new policy of allowing fans into the stadium virtually conscious, uh, continuously because they would have been kept out the whole time. But it is virtually full again now. totally mishit that didn't he he was there he was there it wasn't that difficult these these are the balls Novak wouldn't miss that he just chopped straight down the back technique wasn't good enough didn't open the face enough and follow through to the target but he's probably breathing hard. I mean, 14 minutes, opening service game, there's pressure on him here. Oh. Oh. Gee, it was open. And you can see there, Novak, he's Advantage. almost couldn't believe he missed that one. game played Juice. and the first state in the western world state of Victoria to introduce the safety belt strap yourself in Fitzy could be here a while it's illegal if you don't put it on by the way
advantage. Fritz. Just the second return he has missed out of 23 in this opening game. for Taylor Fritz. What a triumph early on. And one man that's going to be absolutely first thrilled game. about that is fellow American Nick Munro courtside. I was going to bring you on after the first game. Didn't realize I was going to leave you hanging for 16 minutes. <laughs> uh, guys, I got to say, I mean, 16 minutes in, you know, I'm sitting here with an umbrella above my head and I got beads of sweat running down my face. So I got to let you know, Taylor Fritz, that, that was miserable for Taylor Fritz. And I feel like for Novak, he absolutely loves those kinds of rallies. I mean, he was making every return deep in the court. And, you know, that, that's what Novak does. He makes you just play so many long rallies. And, you you know, if you're Taylor Fritz or any opponent, you have to play at such a high level for such a long time to beat this guy. And, you know, I was able to speak with Taylor's coach, Michael Russell, last night. And I said, hey, what, what's your game plan going in? He said, well, Taylor's got to be patient, but he's also got to play aggressive and look for the right opportunity to come forward, be a little bit unpredictable. And we'll see how unpredictable he can be uh, against Novak tonight, today. As much as uh, he likes to support, he does like to problem solve himself, Taylor Fritz. You could hear Mike Russell fit in the, uh, the microphone on the side of the court. Keep it up. Keep it up. Maybe he... Taylor had suggested to him, gee, is every game going to be that tough? He has no choice. He has to keep it up to have a chance. Oh. Oh, just struggling a little bit with something. He was uh, stretching his back out in that opening game towards the end of it. And you could see there with his left arm. the good things for Taylor Fritz. I was speaking with his trainer, Wolfgang Oswald, earlier today, and, and Taylor had kind of rolled his ankle in his first round and ended up getting through that in five sets. But he did say now his ankle's 100%, but we, so we're seeing him move extremely well. So it looks like he's ready to go now. Come on. Not a chance. <laughs> I would, as a coach, encourage someone to hit that. You yeah, haven't worked with someone as good as that. No, that's true. This is an incredible shot. Look how far back he is. He plays that off the back foot behind the baseline and drills it just over the net with backspin. <laughs> Shots that just hit different. I normally don't like guys with this much talent, you know. Oh. That's why you feel comfortable with me. <laughs> Good point. But that was pure talent right there. So not his more ordinary cousin 14. skill. That's just pure talent. Is that not a shot you can learn is that something that you almost are given what that drop shot he yep. hit uh you can try to learn it but you'd probably want to practice it for three years straight 36 years <laughs> 36 years oh. but you know i practiced my serve for 30 years and that didn't go anywhere so you've got to have the you've got to have the nous the ability the genius to hit it. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey guys, just a little something I'm recognizing right now. Novak Djokovic, he was coughing in between first and second serve uh, in his service game there. And, you know, he hit that drop shot from behind the baseline and he kind of looked a little weary. And I know it's early on in the match, but he's, uh, you know, kind of taking a lot of time in between points. Just, you know, something to keep an eye on. He's got his towel on his head right now. And, you know, he hasn't played a day match here in, in quite a long time. So this heat might affect him. Let's keep an eye on it. Well, he hasn't been feeling well, came into the tournament, of course, with the wrist problem, but that seems to have subsided, although we did get a little bit of a look at it in the popper in second round. But the cold that he's been carrying has probably been the uh, biggest obstacle for him to overcome. Had 15 consecutive night matches, didn't he, Novak, before that match with Manorino, but it was a fairly cool day. This is uh, one of the hottest days he's played in for a while here in Melbourne. Well, it was indoors, in fact. Yeah. So th it was a rainy day. They closed the roof. He played it as an indoor match, and so there was no stress, no elements, heat, no sun. You might have some work to do down there, though, Nick. I mean, he, he is chatting already to his box, isn't he? And sometimes that provides a little bit of entertainment. I'm glad Goran is out of the sun, though. He was looking a bit red there in this Australian sun. And the best player in the world shows why. Anticipation, defense, and then the diagonal dagger of a backhand that just took Fritz off the court. He's created some angle, hasn't he? He's talking to someone in the TV back there. Could be Jim Courier. Yeah, Novak actually just looked in the ESPN booth and, and looked at Kyrgios and said, get out here. So uh, just, yeah, something to keep an eye on with, with Novak. He's got his hand on his hip right now, breathing a little heavy. Body language certainly isn't normal, is it? But he, he, he quite often is like this. Just... There's been a lot of times over his career when you look at him, you think, gee, is something wrong with him today? But he finds a way out of it. Either he's, yeah, he feels a bit off color, but give him time. Fritz. Yeah, and because of the power that Fritz has on that forehand, it does create a lot of space in the forecourt, and he's finally exploring it with those drop shots. And that is a massive hole for the American from Love 40 down. 2-1. Leads by two games to one. 
Djokovic already going, Nick, to the, the ice pack. And it doesn't look by my weather app that the heat in the air is going to go out much before sort of 8 o'clock tonight. So he is going to have to deal with this. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, you know, like I said, I've got an umbrella above my head and I'm completely sweating right now on my head. But uh, but for Novak, you know, look, he, he definitely looks like he's feeling it. He's already got the ice towels and towels on his on his lap holding his ear. So, you know, Taylor also, you know, that's not the kind of first game that he wants to play. But, you know, Taylor's one of those guys who completely believes in himself and he's going to believe he's got a chance even if he is 0-8. Time. 14th quarter final for Novak Djokovic in the beautiful city of Melbourne. And on the previous 13 visits to this particular stage, he has won 10 times. Up against a man today that has six titles, picked up a couple last year outdoor on the hard courts did Taylor Fritz in Atlanta and Delray. But notably, against it's the past picked up his first ever top 10 win at a grand slam he had been 0 for 11 against the very best at this particular type of tournament but the win against it's the past started moving that particular stat in the right direction for him but he has never beaten a world number one And the good news for a player like Taylor Fritz is that he has a big game. And if you possess a big game, you can shake a lot of players. I mean, if you if you have a, a rebounding sort of counter-punching type game against Novak, you basically don't have a chance. But at least if you have a big game, something that can hurt, or a few weapons that can hurt the opposition, you're always in a match. Ball. Well, Fitzy, yeah, you got it. You nailed it, coughing on their head there. You know, when I was speaking with Michael Russell, he said another thing they want to do is, you know, again, staying patient, but when he changes directions, he wants them to commit. You talk about the big game that he has. He can play extremely big, but definitely when he goes down the line, he wants them to commit to that and not just guide it, because if you guide it, Novak's going to have you on a string. Guy that Michael Russell. Yep, if you create an angle like that, you, you're going to win a, a fair percentage of points. 15, We've seen Novak do that a couple of times already in this match. Just sometimes Phil Taylor gets a little off balance on his backhand when he tries to 
really Certainly. generate pace and then takes an extra step out and then ends up just being a little later back into the middle of the court, which Novak exposes. Yep. Fine margins. Yeah, you called that perfectly. You saw it in that replay. He went wide and then just got caught. It opens the court up. If there's a slight delay in the movement back to the middle, That's yeah, you guys are right. Taylor doesn't often use an open stance backhand. He typically goes with a right foot across, and he's able to go down the line and cross court with both of those. But you'd like to see him kind of be able to also develop an open stance backhand. He's like a surgeon, though, isn't he, Novak? He, he just found a way there in the last two points to open up the court. He gets Fritz way off the court, and that hard, flat ball that goes back so quickly gives him no time to recover. Well, the other thing that Michael Russell was talking about with uh, the ATP today was how to try and sort of get on to Novak's second serve. Well, he's had a lot of looks at his second serve in those opening couple of games. Novak making just a couple of first serves very below the not sort of normal numbers he's going to be making, but has backed it up, winning six out of eight of the second serve points. So the American hasn't been able to make inroads as yet. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right there, Patch, on the return. And, and again, one thing Russell was talking about on the serve was, I said, look, are there any locations you want to serve to? Because in the past, you used, maybe you used to be able to serve to Novak's forehand, and that might have been the weaker side. But he said, no, no, we really want to mix it up because obviously Novak's the best returner in the game. So you've got to keep him off balance by different variations. Oh. Since September 2013, Novak has taken on American male players 41 times, and he has lost just once. Wonder if Nick Munro can name the one loss. I'll give him this changeover to think about it. Taylor Fritz with a second ace of that game, holding a lot more comfortably. 3-2 opening set. the uh, perfect antidote wasn't it for Taylor Fritz after a couple of very tough service games for him he's managed to uh, ease his way through that one just dropping the one point and he will feel as though he is very much in this match right now doesn't lack belief and 
coming from California. He perhaps won't mind this heat quite as much at this particular stage of the day. As the Rod Laver Arena convertible has its roof open. And a very good chance the day session will become part of the night session too. Time. We're back, Nick. <laughs> you know what's so funny is I was sitting right here, right next to Chris Eubanks, and we were both trying to figure it out. So you definitely stumped us. But but one thing I do know is, you know, he has a 33 consecutive match win streak at Australian Open, and it started with an American by the name of Mitchell Kruger in 2019. So I sent that to Kruger today, and he was laughing and said, "Yeah, it all started with me. That's it's all because of me that he has this great run." But who who beat him? I'm not sure, uh, Pat. You're gonna have to enlighten us. Sam Query at Wimbledon on the grass back in oh, 2016. That's right. That's right. That, that, was, that was a massive. I mean, Sam served massive that match. Yeah. Yeah. He played extremely well. Yeah. Pickleball Sam, as he's now known. <laughs> he sure is. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, check it out. One it's of the it's best. pretty hilarious with the pickleball stories. Novak serving at 2 3, opening set. One of the big changes that Taylor made back in 2022 was to uh, drop a little deeper on the first serve return. That's obviously an area that he was looking to improve. Serves always magnificent. Drop deeper, added about 8Ks in terms of speed, driving through the returns. But you may have seen Novak use the slice so effectively against Manorino and already at the start of this match introduce it a fair bit. That's because Taylor, out of the world's top 50, sits uh, joint last in terms of using his own slice back. And that's what Novak's looking for, is to try and force him to hit those top spin balls off a nothing pace shot down low. Might want to use it a bit more. That was a beautiful one at the start of that rally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 13, one thing you know he's been working on a lot for Taylor is, is a slice backhand. He knows it kind of floats a little bit. He's been trying to knife it a little bit more. But yeah, Taylor in any backhand cross court rally backs himself against anyone in the world except maybe Novak. So it'll be interesting to see if he decides to change that, go down the line with it a little bit more often. For those of you that like to get granular with how these players play, the other person that he sits joint last with is somebody you're going to see tonight who doesn't use the backhand slice that often, and it's the Italian Yannick Sinner. Both players have warmed up nicely on serve, three apiece. As long as in this heat, there's not a fine line between warmed up and worn out. That's what we, <laughs> that's what we don't want. I think they'll both be fine. It's not that hot. I mean, I, I know it's hot sitting down there, Nick, but it, but compared to what it can be here. Uh, well, it's, it's quite bearable, I think. I mean, there's, yeah. a, there's a breeze, isn't there? Yeah, compared to what it can be. But the, the issue is we ha the players haven't played in this kind of heat since they've been here in Melbourne. Yep. So this is completely new, new yeah. territory. Yeah, yeah, good point. Oh. Love for 
you know, Taylor Fritz on his day off yesterday, he just hit for 30 minutes, and, and Mike Russell said it was a very light hit, just kind of rolled the arm over a few serves, few returns, but they did do a few extra drop shots uh, just to try to keep Nole off balance. So let's see how many he hits today. Oh. Problem up there. Service motion. 15, Very good uh, smash. Novak got a little sort of negative here. That was a miss hit. And this was a bit of an ordinary shot too. Just another miss hit that dropped it short. He was he was instantly in trouble when that happened. It's good serve, isn't it? It's so easy. Looks like a serve like this, you could you could do this for four or five hours without much stress. Quality of Novak's returns into the backhand side of Taylor compared to other players on the tour just puts a lot of stress on that first serve. You're absolutely right. It is effortless, the American serve. Oh, he's landed another glorious forehand. High risk. But plenty of reward there for Taylor Fritz, 4-3. Fritz leads by four games to three. Mick, you're probably a little bit more in tune with this, did uh, as we see Taylor running across here. Look how strong that grip is. Did uh, did Morgan do the Vegemite? Promise. <laughs> you know what? He was supposed to send me the video yeah. yesterday, so I think it did happen. Uh, he hasn't sent it to me yet, but I'll, I'll get some proof. I'll get some proof because <laughs> he said he was going to make sure that it happened. Uh, but would you do it, Patch? What do you think? Bet you might. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was made here in Victoria. <laughs> oh, it's yeah? one of the great okay. inventions of uh, of this wonderful state. Okay, Nick. nice. All right, is there peanut butter in Australia as well? Is there any of that? Or come on, Nick, Vegemite <laughs> or nothing? Man. Come on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, I've got confirmation that she has does it. I haven't seen the video evidence, but uh, apparently it's been done. She holds Time. up her end of the bargain. It's been a lot to enjoy in these uh, opening seven games. Some chances on both sides of the net, but both have settled in to this quarterfinal. Hot day here in Melbourne, but certainly not the hottest. The hottest all the way back in 1906. I know we like to think that we're having the hottest time of our lives, but back in 1906, the state of Victoria, 50.6 on the Mercury scale. Pretty warm day. Yeah, I remember I played here one year, uh, I believe it was 2017, and we got pulled off of the court. Um, you know, it's about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and guys were cramping and it, it was brutal so this isn't nearly as hot as that but definitely hot only because it hasn't been that way throughout the week for for these guys
15 well, on a warm day like this uh, notice i didn't say hot mark <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really important i think to get the first point on the board and it, it sort of sets the tone if you're trying to break serve and you don't get that first one oh gee you know there's going to be a big physical effort now here The great return. So now, now you can have a crack again if you're Taylor Fritz. You might feel mentally a bit more in this game. And uh, if you get ahead in it, it really does give you sort of an opening, an inch of daylight, so to speak, to, to make a physical effort. If you get behind in these games, it's harder to get the energy levels up, I think. Great approach. I mean, he's a complete player, isn't he? I mean, you go to hit the slice, and you can't just hit it anywhere in the box straight Murphy. to that forehand. You've, you've got to do something offensive with it, and that comes with the length. Within a third of a metre, probably, of that baseline makes it awkward to pass. Clever player. Oh. I'm interested to see how well Taylor Fritz holds up physically. You know, he didn't have that long of a preseason. He played an EXO in Macau December 3rd through 6th and went to Abu Dhabi at the end of December for a few days, December 21st through 24th. And so the week before Melbourne, the week before this tournament started, they had a preseason week here to he and Russell about three and a half hours a day between tennis and gym for seven days to get ready for this kind of heat and this kind of matchup. Well, he's the type of player that one day, I don't, know, I don't know if it's today, but one day soon you'd expect him to break through this quarterfinal barrier. And then with a big game like this, you'd expect anything could happen. Well, the body serve set that up Djokovic. straight at the body. Short return, one-two punch. Yeah, and he's given him a, a pretty varied diet on that second serve Four on the minutes. outside, isn't he, at the moment? Those quick ones down the tee that we know Novak uh, likes to hit, particularly on the break points down. Taylor was ready for that. He wasn't ready for the body serve. You won't give him too many off-pace kickers out wide to that backhand. That no. backhand return from Taylor is very strong. Why wouldn't you go more at the body? A long arms, you know, get him to tangle himself up a little bit. That was a perfect serve there. Love to talk about Love taking time her. away from opponents, don't we? But just watch Novak there on such a massive point as you've been talking about the reasons why, Fitzy. In the ninth game of this opening set, he went at least two and a half meters behind his baseline. He was just happy to absorb pressure and wait for the error. Oh.
Yeah, look out. Look out, Taylor. Guys, I mean, how early did he take that second serve return and then just put it right on the baseline inside out? I mean, you know, taking time away, Petch, uh, amazingly there on that return. Just so much pace on it, and Taylor just couldn't get it. Fifteen. Yeah, well, he went after that second serve a little bit uh, towards the body too, and used a, the tactics in reverse there. If he has plenty of time on that forehand, it's it's lethal. Oh. just doing an amazing job of returning a serve at the moment. I mean, Taylor came into this with over 40% of his serves unreturned for the tournament. It's at 20% right now. He is having to work so hard to protect his serve. Hasn't been able to break on the opening six that he's had. Just see the intensity there, though. Guys, it seems like he's serving quite a few balls to the forehand. You know, I feel like after a while, Novak's going to get a beat on that. And they'll have to go a few more to the backhand. But right now, when he's going to the forehand, Novak seems to be right on it. Oh. He held a 15 or 16 minute game in the first game of the match. And this one just as important. He's done well there. Can he hold on? And back to the forehand. Nice. Got a shortish reply. His heart would have been in his mouth as that lob sailed over his head, but traveled too long. sometimes like to see Taylor Jeez. use his feet in those moments to get his forehand into play. It wouldn't have taken much. I mean, that could be a little fatigue already creeping in, just not, not wanting to get around that ball quite yet. Keep it simple with the backhand and then wait for the right forehand. Oh.
it's a shot that he needs to risk on, isn't it? Advantage. I mean, that's his best ground stroke. If he gets set here, he needs... Why not? Go for it. Best chance to win the point here. And have a day out on that forehand. That can make a big, big difference here. Give him an opportunity. Oh. Another very gritty hold from Taylor Fritz, 5-4. Fritz leads by five games, 2-4. That is just going to infuse him with a little more belief that he's been able to uh, scramble to safety, saving eight break points in this opening set so far. As for Novak, he's going to be quite happy, I think, as he sees that shadow continue to drift across this court won't be too long now before it's actually all in shade and despite the heat in the air it would definitely get a little bit cooler just regardless because of that Taylor still looking for his first ever last four visit at a major. Novak, of course, has had at least 10 or more at all four of the majors. 13 is his most in New York. He's had a dozen semifinals reached at both Roland Garros and Wimbledon and looking for his 11th today here in Melbourne. It's astonishing. Played over 100 matches at all four majors. Experience on his side today, no question. And in the rivalry with Taylor Fritz, but not the scoreboard currently. Fritz leading 5-4. Hey guys, uh, just wanted to ask you a question. Are you guys, uh, can you figure out when Novak has the hat on and hat off? Because on this side, he had the hat on in the beginning of the match, and it was because the sun was to the right, and so I felt like he was using that for the sun, then he took it off on the other side, but now he's got his hat off on the side that he had it on, so just kind of a lot of different routines he's going through right now. It was definitely from this end at the start of the match. Oh. Well, knowing how street smart Novak Djokovic is on a tennis court, he knows also that the shadow is coming. So it's warm now. 
He's just got to get through this period. Preferably he wins this first set in his mind. And conditions will cool down. It might take a bit longer to get to Nick on the side of the court, unfortunately for you, mate. But it, the, the shadow is coming and it will cool down. Oh. Nick's a tough guy anyway. You know. Braving it out, guys. Braving it out. Just like <laughs> you guys. It's great tennis out here. He's hit two loose ones this game. That's dangerous. Two loose ones. The drop shot and the second point. And look at the opportunity in Taylor Fritz's eyes now. Oh, what a waste. That is a huge waste from Taylor Fritz. I mean, you've got a sense when Novak is just stumbling slightly by his standards. He gets a second serve. That was when he needed to use every ounce of energy he had. I think it was a change of pace on that second serve because the last second serve he had on this ad side, he went really big, about 178, I believe, and on this side, he went 152. So changing the pace is big time on second serve is affecting Taylor. Oh. Yeah. Well, what could have been there for Taylor Fritz has dissipated. Five Just wonder whether he was in two minds about whether he should have run around that second serve on the due side at 30 all because we've been seeing him just knocking backhands into court yeah. and that was one of the rare times that he actually did try and move to the forehand. If you listen to Michael Russell and he says he's got to take his chances, Became he's got to. That was a forehand all day for me, and, and it's his best shot. He had time, and maybe it was the pace that threw him slightly, but that was a ball he just had to make. The juice one, second serve. Nevertheless. Oh, that's, that's first class. And ironically, he's, he's actually made on a couple of big occasions. One was a break point, and then this one here made extraordinary backhand winners. Not considered his better side. Great points where he's kind of cruised through his service games. Taylor Fritz, big delta Fritz, between the two. 6 5, opening game. set.
Never beat Novak. Never taken the opening set off Novak as well. So the next 5, 10, 15 minutes, who knows, depending on uh, how long some of these epic games have taken and will take in this opening set could decide a lot today. His attention to detail is uh, legendary, although it uh, would appear that there is something that is missing right now from uh, Novak's bag. Time. Novak desperate to get the attention of his team uh, for whatever is not in his bag at that particular changeover. Saw him getting some gel out and there are the men in the hot seat in that particular department. It is demanding, isn't it? Being in that box. Yeah, as you said, guys, he's just such attention to details, big for Novak, and he said something, he said jaw about as loud as he could, and, and I'm trying to think of the tournament where that happened later in the year, last year, where, again, that same thing, something wasn't in his bag, the team had to go get it, and, uh, yeah, that, that can't happen if you're Team Novak, especially in these conditions. Well, guys, there's the drop shot that Michael Russell said they were working on yesterday. The short one inside out from the backhand side and using it in a key moment like that is impressive from Fritz. Thank you. Set up the point. Doesn't mean he's going to win the point at all. He had to really play a high level point here to win. But at least it got him into the into the point and uh, gave him a chance to do this. He's not without a chance here now. Such a play this has been from Taylor Fritz. 
taken full control of this particular game. Introduces the ball to the line and himself to a couple of set points. Thank you. Please, ladies and gentlemen. Pure perfection to save the first of the two set points. definition of clutch. In 2021, I saw Taylor Fritz lead two yes. sets to love against Novak, and it looked for all money like he was going to beat him that, that day, which turned into a bit of night in the first COVID year here. And I just had a little recollection of that then in 1540, but Djokovic, to his credit, his eternal credit in clutch situations comes through. particularly when you think he was serving under 40% first serves in prior to those couple of set points. Has dropped the speed to make sure he made them. Credit to him. But it may just be enough for the world number one to drag himself into a tie break. Please. Well, guys, if I'm Taylor Fritz here from 1540 all the way to get back to Deuce here, that's four serves in a row to Taylor Fritz's forehand. So as a returner, you got to start looking and see what are the tendencies of your opponent. And so back, so far, Novak Djokovic is going into the forehand wing when he needs a point. And that's one of the downsides from standing so far out wide, isn't it? That he can drop in a fairly comfortable 176k first serve, as you can see, and it kind of keeps going away from Taylor. Manufacture that angle. 
Yeah, that was a big swing. He looked for all money like he was going to be down a set there. Yep, he looked a little more gone than goat at that particular stage, but he is absolutely the goat when it comes to tiebreakers. The best ever. Thank you. And there's the reputation tax you pay. Yeah, what's the name of the game, guys? Make one more ball. That's exactly what Novak does. And Taylor Fritz in his preseason week before this Australian Open, he was doing 30-minute Versa climber sessions with his coach, Michael Russell. So let's see if the fitness pays off in this tiebreaker and throughout this match. Taylor last season played a lot of tiebreakers as you would expect for somebody that uh, serves as well as he does. We won 26, lost 17, which is not the greatest ratio. Novak last year won 31, lost 8. Oh. That's the tricky part, right? When you work on your drop shot, you also have to work on what happens after you hit the drop shot. And Taylor Fritz's grip just wasn't able to where he could get under that next ball. Yeah, well picked, Nick. That, it is so extreme. Anything low and short. When it bounces up like that, last one, he's fine. But you're putting all your... Djokovic. Eggs in one basket, aren't you, with that extreme grip if you're moving forward to a low ball? That's the thing about Novak, I'm sure you've seen it, Nick, and maybe you've even been on the court with him, but even the warm-ups, the little drills he does, that game where he bounces it down into the court and moves, 
so much of his preparation is all around moments like that where he has to finesse it. Yeah, you're completely right, Petch. I mean, you know, those little intangible shots, right? Like, you know, Taylor hit a good drop shot. He got drop shot it back, but then he's never really worked on what happens when I come up in the court like that. But that's why Novak works on those little short angles, everything from the service line moving forward. Those little games turn into big pressure moments, you being able to be ready for them. Produces his best. Six, one, Djokovic. And before he even hit the drop shot, he knew what he was looking to do to pick off Fritz of the net. Yeah, I think he also knows Taylor's tendency with short backhands. Taylor always goes cross court. Novak was there before Taylor even hit the ball. From having Thanks. saved set points, he has five in a row. Six, two, Djokovic. Times he's taken on Djokovic, nine times he's lost the opening set. The world number one is up by one set to love. Love that.
Novak serves that well on the second 14. ball. It's hard to really make many inroads anyway. We saw Taylor there hit a pretty good forehand, but it, it didn't put him or give him the upper hand in the rally early. So, yeah, the second serve was good. Only 140, but directed really well. And he does have that wide, fast one up his sleeve as well. Kind of feel as though he's hit a little bit of a flat spot at the moment, Novak, and he's just trying to kind of rile himself up. say though one thing it's easy sitting up here I haven't played a set in the heat but sometimes the tennis the modern tennis is just agonizingly slow isn't it I mean it's it's incredibly high standard but we're an hour and 36 minutes into this match Guys, how big was that second serve? 190 kilometers an hour after double faulting. I mean, no margin for error either. When I'm looking at the net, it barely cleared the net to go over. But just trust in his serve, but he is barking at his team these last three points. Absolutely. It was almost like he was trying to indicate somebody to leave. He wanted somebody to get out of his box.
advantage, Fritz. Can Taylor Fritz get out of the gates quickly at the start of this second? Seemingly dropping even deeper, the American, for this first serve. Falls costly for the world number one. First game, second game. Yeah, guys, you, you nailed that right on the head, Fetch, how far Taylor Fritz went back behind the baseline to return that serve. And, you know, that just changes up the rhythm for Novak as far as the timing of balls coming back. And then Taylor Fritz completely taking advantage coming to the net here at the finish. But, you know, his energy has been the same throughout this match, Taylor Fritz. He hasn't gotten two up, two down. He's been the same. And for Novak, let's see, now that when he's close to his team, let's see if the barking continues even more. Looked as though he was going to get himself out of the hole that he'd built for himself down Love 30 with some quality first serves wasn't to be. What sort of reaction will that opening game provoke from the world number one? Well, right now he's, he's not happy, but he's probably relieved on the inside about that first set result. Because if, if he hadn't have turned the tables there. This might have been a more serious situation. Oh. 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 Certainly a bit aggravated though, isn't he? 15, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny I mean, when he was on the other side of the court He was staring at them for four points straight over to his box and then now he's on this side of the court He hasn't even looked at them once. So maybe now that he's down a break. He knows he needs to lock in now That's a It's not as seductive as a winner that backhand, but it is equally productive.
just amazing he actually made the two shots just and not just made them, made them to a length, which just put pressure on Taylor Fritz. Yeah, I mean, Novak Djokovic, he's looking like Gumby out here. I mean, seeing the flexibility <laughs> and dexterity that he's got, it's just incredible. Yeah, a little bit disastrous, wouldn't it, if uh, if this break of serve goes back the other way against Taylor Fritz from his point of view. He's got himself into a position where he can stay within touch with a break in hand. Novak 0 for 9 on break points. Yes. is back to back consolidate the break Prince Ace is number seven and eight for the match seven. for the American oh guys the closer Novak gets to me and I'm, I've been staring right at him you know I've seen a lot of sniffles from Novak um, you know that definitely doesn't seem like he's hundred percent yet over that cold and he's definitely been sniffling quite a lot so I'll keep an eye on it see how he's feeling And the Fritz winning a lot of those pressure points, the 30 all points, the juice points, not just the break points, of course. Please. Especially between first and second. Thirty left. Well, he wanders in behind the serve. It wasn't really a serve and volley. Uh, Taylor Fritz has done a bit of the hard work at the start of this second set by taking the break. Leads 2-1. Can I test in this right Yeah, same time, same. Tyler wants the stick restrung. He's planning to be around for a while. Interesting sort of uh, game that, and obviously a look, Novak with the towel over his head at the moment. And that was when he was in the opening set, just calling for some food refreshments. 
And that was after the double fault where he was bitterly disappointed. That was something we're unsure about. But he is agitated, there's no question. And those Serbian fans will just be a little concerned about the state of the mind of the world number one for the time being. Back here in Melbourne, the home of sport, of course, so many uh, wonderful different sporting codes in this particular part of the world. A very special promenade. Of course, home to the Olympic Games, first Southern Hemisphere city here in Melbourne to host the Olympic Games. And that all the way back in 1956. Well, guys, that last changeover, Novak Djokovic had the ice no, towel around his neck. Taylor Fritz did not. So it seems like Taylor is completely fine with, with the heat and what's happening right now. Novak, body temperature maybe a little bit high, so he's trying to cool down. And not only that, after time was called, Novak sat there for about another five or six seconds, and the chair looked at him, and he just kind of looked at her as if, what are you going to do? And then he, then he finally got up and uh, got to work. can be a little difficult to gauge great players in these moments. And great, because you're just never quite sure what's going through their mind. They are geniuses and they see things very differently. They motivate themselves in very different ways. Well, he's not showing any energy at the moment here at all, is he? So he's having a rest period here in this match. That opening Fritz, break and then the, five, three, the saving four. of the break point from Taylor Fritz was pretty important. It might just let him roll through this second set. I think we can expect something different in the third if that happens. But, but he is in second gear right now, not running on eight cylinders. Novak. Fifteen love. Oh. Well, maybe the Titanic opening set has taken a little bit out of Fritz both of them, or Fritz just not Fritz. wanting to give Djokovic any rhythm at the moment, but uh, as he has the lead, 3-2 to the American. Yeah. 
while it's still green. I mean, they're so strong. Is it really necessary? Because we see, we see just fine. So just asking there whether the light should be on it, it's probably a valid question, really, I guess. I mean, it's a bright day. There's no problem with seeing the ball down there. Um, maybe they're on in readiness for the evening session. I don't know how long, I actually don't know how long they take to, to warm up once they go off. So Novak asking the question, this, they seem to bother him a little bit. Yeah, look, down here at Port Leveral, I mean, the lights don't need to be on at this, at this moment. It's definitely uh, bright enough, but hey, here we are with the lights on. Oh, they're just swapping bottles over here at the moment and getting it out to Novak, who's... Uh, Clearly feeling the effects of the heat. It's never not dramatic against Taylor here, is it? When he uh, tore his abdomen, that right abdomen when he was playing against Taylor back in 2021. We also, of course, had the slightly bizarre situation that the fans had to leave because of quarantine rules at midnight yeah. from the Rod Laver Arena, which was a, a very awkward affair. Taylor was a bit disappointed. He got distracted in that one by everything that went on. Let's press her. So his energy level looks back a fraction there, Nick. I'm not sure whether Lovely. it's just the first point of the game and he, and he figures if he can get ahead here, he'll put in a physical effort. But his body language is a little better now. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit better. And as I said, it's even dropped another couple degrees from where we were even 10 minutes ago. So it's definitely gotten cooler. And I think that helps is helping Novak big time. But not only that, I mean, the greatest know when to step up, when it's time to step up. And being down a break right now, this is the time to try to get a break back. Oh. Taylor Fritz, yeah. that massive grip change, he tried to get it in the right place, it just didn't. Well, I think it's unfair to call it a flaw, but, it, but the grip change works for his forehand and that's his biggest weapon. But it doesn't have the versatility when he moves forward. Yeah, and he, and he also knows, even if he comes in, it's very low, but even if he tries to come over that, the, the margin for error is just so small. I mean, he, he's going to have to really get under it. But as you said, yeah. that, that those intangibles is what needs to be worked on in this game yeah. for sure. Yeah, and he, he hit that on the frame, Nick. It, it, it didn't even get on the strings. 
And also when you look at him, he puts his left foot down as a break. It's very hard to hit that with no body weight kind of helping you. He wants to almost just hop forward off that and allow it to kind of take it over the net. To feather it from there is extremely difficult, but the serve bails him out of the first break point. Oh. He did well there, though, by Eck. Novak, yeah, and he applauds him. I mean, Novak hit a great return to get the upper hand in the rally and followed it with a great forehand, and that was the result. He hit that forehand Fritz to get back in the point and finishes it. That was one heck of a turnaround there in that particular point to save the break. This is a big Fritz. game for him. Well, guys, it was interesting. On the 15-40 point, Taylor Fritz went wide at the forehand. Novak looked at his team, and the team seemed to tell him, like, hey, look for your forehand, look for your forehand on the return. And the last two serves, Taylor's gone at the backhand. So he's definitely confusing Djokovic right here right now. Fritz needs my four games to do. Final stroke in Fritz's repertoire gets him out of trouble. And just a couple of games away from squaring up this quarterfinal. to get there with leg speed, Taylor, but when he got there, 15, there was very little feel. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, the, the best shot for me when somebody drop shots you to try to drop shot it in front of you, bring your opponent forward so you give him less angle, but yeah, he doesn't really have much feel when he, he has to run up and get that drop shot. the outcome of this match but they meant to start the evening session here in 15 minutes at Melbourne Park the, the day session has gone excruciatingly long get rid of the shot clock I say <laughs> But, you know, the players are so used to taking so long between points now, and they watch the, the shot clock. And matches are, are just taking so long these days. It's okay to criticize organization, but the rules are out of their hands. The rules allow these matches to go so long. Oh. There is nothing better than watching a drop shot that just simply robs the ball of its bounce. And that was as delicate as they come. Look at this. He has that disguise where he's able to play it with both hands on the racket. So it looks as though it's going to be a driven backhand. Some two-handers, they put the, uh, the non-playing hand right at the top, the non-dominant hand. 
and you kind of know it's going to come. Novak doesn't. It has perfect disguise as that serve had perfect placement. And this second set is still all to play for. But as much as the lack of heat that is uh, sort of coming into the stadium now, it's still going to help Taylor Fritz as well. I mean, it's no, nobody feels that comfortable playing in the heat. It's also going to give him a little bit of boost to be able to put in a little extra burst of energy on his own service game. Yeah, 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 he's looking at yeah, the good thing for Taylor is, look, I've played doubles with him quite a lot, and he always talked about how much he loves playing in the heat, and he's never cramped before. Um, you know, that really has affected him, and so he's like, look, put me in the heat against anybody, and I'll be ready. Time. Big stat, of course, so far in this match is Djokovic's inability to break Taylor Fritz, having carved out 11 break points. I think I make it only once in a completed match that Novak hasn't broken in a best of five. That was against Leighton Hewitt, US Open 2006. Five break points for Novak and didn't get the break against Leighton in that particular match. So Taylor has to expect at some time that his serve will get broken. But so far, for over two hours, Novak has been yet to break the American. Oh. done a good job as well Taylor Could using his backhand that, yeah. down the line to force Novak to go forehand cross to get his forehand back into play occasionally he's trying to go toe to toe and uh, he's been good in that department but he's been very quick to redirect in some of these baseline rallies but you have to be quick across the baseline to get there Thirty left. Novak not flinging himself at as many serves in this set. Seven aces already for Taylor. And perhaps more importantly, over double the number of serves not coming back. We were highlighting just how well Novak was returning that serve, not giving Taylor any free points. Well, normal service has been resumed for the American. Lots of cheap points in this second set. Well, I hope you haven't put the mozzarella on him, Mark. 
We jinxed him in your language. Look at the quick step now. It's funny, isn't it? He just senses it. Djokovic, he's... Another opportunity to get back in this set. Guys, that was a great volley. You know, after that approach shot, I was thinking to myself, oh no, because, you know, Novak is such a great passer. And Taylor Fritz got on top of the net there, was holding the racket actually with two hands when I was looking at him. Finally, last minute, took the, took the left hand off. Picture perfect, though, moving forward. I think Nick was holding his breath down there. <laughs> we know Novak's got all the weapons. Let's first one. How did he come to up that angle? Yeah, nothing but admiration there for Taylor Fritz. He, a couple of times he was under the pump to stay in this rally. He kept himself in it with that forehand down the line. And then this it was hard to see him making, wasn't it? Yeah, that ball that came up there. Hit short cross court almost bounced twice. It was so low. And I mean, the Taylor Pitch just outfoxed the Fox. That was incredible. Oh. You can do it once, but maybe not twice. Advantage. Djokovic. Oh, for thirteen on break points. And he's got him again. Astonishing courage. Well, we don't see it as his best ground strike, but it's actually saved him Jeez. on several occasions, hasn't it, tonight? Break points, particularly. Having the courage of his convictions.
please. I mean, the three returns that he has made on that due side have been right under the shoelaces of Taylor Fritz. Immaculate returning. And he is biding his time. knew what was coming trademark return into the backhand Just but this vintage shot from Fritz it's the old ball and the younger ball here going head to head Well, I think uh, a good Hunt choice Hitch. in the end. He'd been to the back end Fritz. most of the time here in this in this game, and the returns were within a meter and a half of the baseline. So, I think a good change up. He had to go there eventually, Fritz, to that forehand wing. Yeah, that was impressive stuff. And, and again, I practiced Taylor Fritz quite a lot. And that backhand down the line is one of his trademark shots. He can literally put it on a dime. Michael Russell, a lot of times, just puts like puts a tennis ball down as his target. And you'll see Taylor Fritz either hit the ball or be well within hitting it. And uh, yeah, that saved him big time there. And we're in a battle. It's important to do it on the practice court. It's even harder, though, to do it out here in Novak's house as we are one minute shy Ladies from the right, evening session getting underway, which will be significantly delayed tonight. It's going to be a late night in Melbourne. The only bit of good news for Sinner and Rublev, of course, is that we are playing on Tuesday. They will end up finishing, you would imagine, probably on Wednesday, but they will have until Friday to recover. Fifteen. Fortieth winner. Thirty.
I just see that? What I want to know is, does that go down as a serve and volley on the stats? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it does. Guys, what just happened there? <laughs> Have a look at this again. I mean, say oh. say what? Uh, Nick, do you know if that was actually going out? No, I was. it was going in, but, you know, I mean, Novak's just ready for anything. That's why he's the GOAT. <laughs> Last chance for Novak Prince to salvage this second set. Second. Taylor will serve for one set apiece. What an instinctive save that was from Novak off a return that was potentially going to set up a set point for Taylor Fritz and would have put him out of the agony of potentially trying to serve this out. Some little problem there with the left foot of Taylor there, Nick. Uh, you know, that was the left ankle that that Wolfgang is physio was saying that he rolled in his first set or first round match and uh, he said, look, but he's 100 percent now. He's not feeling it at all. So, yeah, that could be interesting to see. He was just looking at Wolfgang and, and I was trying to read his lips, but he is feeling it. And uh, let's keep an eye on it. Perfect weather and magnificent crowds here. And this is host to where we are, the Rod Laver Arena, as we dive back in at this absolutely crucial stage of the second set. Taylor Fritz yet to be broken in the match, looking to try and serve it out. He did have his shoe off at that change of ends. He had a little bit of a problem in his opening round with that left ankle. Has the physical toll potentially caught up with the American number one? Certainly hope not. Long way to go from here. A lot of runway ahead if he is going to get through into the first semi-final of a major of his career. Thank you. You know, I was actually texting with Taylor's physio just four games ago and kind of asking, hey, what do you think of Taylor's fitness right now? And he said, well, he's looking great. He looks 100% fresh still. He goes, look, he wasn't using ice and Novak was. So he's got the upper hand. Well, I think he deserves this set. Uh, uh, he was close to winning the first. Just the third set he's ever picked up against Novak. He had lost his last 13. Taylor Fritz fights back in this quarter final. One set all. Doesn't even make a step for it. Fascinating. Now that's very interesting for me. I mean, the very first point, you know, he looked like he was moving side to side really well there, but then not to move forward at all. It kind of makes a statement to Taylor Fritz that, hey, maybe I should keep using the drop shot, see if he's actually kind of going to come get it.
15 over. Thirty for ten. This is some fabulous moving from Taylor Fritz and some delicate touch from Novak to just somehow come out on top in this exchange. First game, nice clean hole in the end as we take you backstage to some of the great American champions. Jim Curry is doing such a wonderful job as ever here. Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi was in town. It was great to see Andre here, four-time champion back in Melbourne. And hopefully may see him a little bit more around the game over the course of the next year. Inspiration, no doubt, for Taylor Fritz, and of course, many stories would have been told by his uh, second coach, Paul Anacone, about the great Pete Sampras. Paul that spent time with Tim Hemmen and Roger Federer. And one of the great minds in tennis trying to plot a way around the world number one for the first time in his ninth meeting with him. Gumby doing it once again, Novak Djokovic, Taylor Fritz, all he could do was just laugh and smile over to his camp because he played a great point. I love the drop shot choice, especially since Djokovic didn't run for it in the very first game. So why not try to see if he's going to come? But that was just too good from Novak. Certainly look as though it's going to be probably the longest that he spent on court through five rounds. If he does make the semifinals here, Djokovic is uh, closing in on almost 14 hours on court already in his opening five matches. 
back in 2021, the year that he played Taylor on the way through. He had battles with Francis Tiafo over four sets. That three and a half hours. The Fritz match was three hours, 25. Milos Raonic, three hours. Zverev, three and a half hours. Obviously went on to claim the title. A couple of uh, straight sets wins in the end against Karatsev and Medvedev in the final. times today on those big pressure points that we've been showing you as he come up with something a little special yeah and taylor fritz he absolutely loves the out wide serve on the ad side so you you know you better believe that novak's going to start reading that one at some point What a start this potentially would be for Novak. Put to bed the problems of the break points that he hasn't been able to convert. Thank you. And that's the kind of expansive play that we see. This is a great dig from Taylor Fritz. Gave himself a half a chance still from here to maybe rescue it. Just couldn't. Yeah, how good, guys, is Novak at spreading the court? You know, we tell juniors and, and, and adults of moving the ball side to side, keep your opponent on a string. But Novak does such a good job of getting the ball off of the court and just keeping you moving nonstop. And he showed there the advantage of varying the attack, didn't he? Taylor wasn't quite sure where the forehand was going to go prior to the winning one. And it went back in behind to the backhand side. He just opened up the court a little bit more, made the final shot that much easier. I don't know if Taylor is winded here or he's actually wounded because he is not moving as well as we have seen in this match. And we saw the shoe off at the changeover, and they didn't really push off for that one out wide. Fourteen. Gee, that one didn't look good either. I mean, that was a nice serve, good serve, but he he guessed then and started moving to his left. Never a good look. Oh. Yeah. 
three straight games at the start of the third set for the world number one. Djokovic leads by three games tonight. And Nick, he's had a few problems with his feet in the past, hasn't he? That one just before the uh, Indian Wells final that he amazingly uh, ended up winning. Uh, that was obviously featured on Netflix, but he's been in a boot before for stress factors. I'm just hoping that there's nothing too serious here for Taylor. But that was a that was a game where he did look as though he was limping through it. Yeah, you know, there, it was there. And again, we talk about the left angle and, you know, he's talking to Wilking, his trainer right now. He looked at him and said, it's fine, whatever it is. Um, you know, Wilking did tell me the ankle was fine going into this match. But again, you just talk about the amount of balls that you have to play against Novak and the pressure that he puts on you to move side to side. And, you know, the very first game of the match was, was an intense one. So, yeah, hopefully this guy's healthy going forward. Time. Let's fly over outside as everybody is parked on the grass or any seats that they can get to come and watch here at Melbourne. It has been uh, absolutely fantastic. Of course, the first 15 day Australian Open this year, the inaugural one, and it has been magnificent the opening week just to see the throngs of crowd that have come, the popularity of tennis and just the fabulous job that the Tennis Australia event management do. They have put on such a great show. so many youngsters coming in here as well to enjoy their day at the tennis and of course walk away with a great memory of how wonderful this sport is oh. 15 left Taylor of course has made some uh, miraculous recoveries from injuries in the past the meniscus surgery that he had just uh, at the french open in 2021 we never thought he'd make it back for wimbledon but he managed to it was an incredible effort from him He tore the meniscus in this 13, final 15. point of his second round match at Roland Garros that particular year came back didn't just come back though ended up coming back and making the third round at Wimbledon and lost a, a pretty tight one against Zverev. is the backhand return though from Djokovic you, you run out of superlatives it, it's he produces the same swing pattern the same hit on the ball times it just as well virtually all the time and, and it's always deep it's an incredible shot you know and, and when the big points arrive it always asks the question Djokovic leads by three games to one. Sun just still peering just into the roof of the Rod Laver Arena at the moment, but it is certainly a lot cooler and it does allow that break of serve as well for Novak just to condense his energy into these one games. If he gets a little look on a Taylor Fritz service game, great. I'm sure he'll invest in it. But these are the moments, particularly the first couple of points of each service game that he's going to give absolutely everything to. 15 left. 
remember Stefan Edberg once saying to me, always concentrate on the first two points of every single game, the serve game and return game. You get up 30 love, you're pretty much home and dry. I kind of felt like there was no chance I could ever take my foot off ever. Yeah, I feel like that's just such a good lesson. I mean, that's one thing I try to coach, you know, the kids with the USTA American tennis and just really focusing on the first two points because sometimes you come up in a game and you're just kind of playing and you're not really thinking about your game plan. But the more you're thinking about those first or second points and that's when your your mind is a bit sharper. Fourteen. One thing you know that over the course of five sets or best of five sets, players have their dips and their peaks and Novak's no different. At times he has those those low times in matches, but he will come good. And in terms 14. of pure numbers, the previous serve, not the one that we just saw, but the previous one on the juice side was his fastest serve of the day. So that also bodes well for Djokovic fans. The energy is there to be able to produce that kind of velocity. Djokovic. Suddenly running right on serve. Aces galore in that game. 4-1. leads by four games to one. And he isn't spending any extra energy that he was maybe earlier in the match. Everything that he is doing is conserving as much energy as he has. Time. Looking to get through to his 48th semi final across all the majors that he has played in over the years. And he is the record holder in that department already. So looking just to extend that. What can Taylor Fritz do here? What sort of impact can he have? Again, he didn't seem to be like Novak a little bit in that second set, just flinging himself at some of these returns. Well, it takes mental strength coming from behind. He must feel like he's been doing that the whole match so far has to stay the course. Well, guys, Taylor Fritz in true Taylor Fritz fashion on that changeover looked over at his camp and's like, "Don't worry, I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold." And so. In his mind, he's like, look, I'm just I'm going to keep holding and I'm going to see if I can get that break when it matters most. Taylor Fritz was there. The length of Djokovic was astounding. 
He hit the ball within a metre of the baseline maybe six times in that rally. And Fritz still won it. He was able to fend off that depth. And finally, and that one dropped a fraction shorter than most, and then he rips one. Heck of a point from Fritz there. Point. He must have felt like he was half bowling everything, and he still won the point. Not a bad serve, not quite close enough to the line. Good night. Yeah, Taylor it's... Fritz. Taylor Fritz looked over in this direction, and he goes, "That was a good serve." Yeah, and then just got taken over by Djokovic. Yeah, it's relentless, Nick, isn't it? Sure is. Fourteen for ten. I think he's the type of player, Fritz, though, that if things fall right for him, he can win a major. I think. If, if things fall right for him. It's really been... A joy Chris. to watch him work on that sort of shot. It isn't something that's ever come naturally to him. Djokovic but he has spent hours tirelessly trying to find something just a little bit different to upset those kind of rallying situations. Yeah, in the meantime, they started working on that was in Munich last year. So that's in April. And, you know, I was speaking with Michael Russell during that time. And he said, yeah, we've got to find a way to get drop shots into his game. And that Munich tournament is on the clay courts. And that was a perfect time to work on it. But Fitzy, I'd agree with you. This guy could definitely win a major. And it goes back to his belief in himself. He just believes he's better than Please, anyone he plays so against any given day. Students. And that belief is huge. I still think, Nick, he's got to fix that grip change on the on the on the low short forehands that's the that's the biggest thing for me when the ball bounces up he's as good as anybody in the world but hey there's not many perfect players around you know everyone has chinks in their armor 15, and uh, well no. not since you retired anyway <laughs> stop it this guy Patch never had a chink in his armor he, he had a few i saw them whatever I didn't he have tells any armor. you that was the problem. Whatever, whatever he tells you nick don't believe him. Oh. I mean, most players, though, they don't have perfect games. They have weaknesses and strengths. And, and yes, he's got a bit of a weakness on that low forehand. But if he can work on that a bit, he's, he's worked on the drop shot. He's right there, coming into the prime of his career. Oh. 15 up. Double faults was what caused the problems in the second set to allow Fritz to get off to a good start. Another one creeps in. Still feel as though Taylor is struggling a little bit to push off, and that's why he's kind of guessing one way or the other to put weight on one leg just to make it a little bit easier to move rather than holding a neutral split step and being able to push. Flexible there when he's made to change direction. He's a big athlete, not quite as balanced, obviously, as, as Djokovic. And, uh, that drop shot may not have been the right choice from way back there. But I admire the fact that he's really experimenting with it you know, on a stage like this.
Djokovic. Barely dropping points on serve in this third set. Djokovic, Djokovic pulls ahead, 5-2. He's uh, pretty keen to keep a little uh, personal space there, Novak, as he looks at the cameraman. And he certainly kept a bit of personal space between him and Taylor Fritz in this third set. Very, very quick start. Maintained his lead, invested just enough in it. I understand personal space. Sometimes you've just got to have some. After two weeks of me, <laughs> I completely understand where you're very, coming from. a very small commentary box and, it, here. and every day you come in, it must feel as though it's got like a <laughs> metre smaller sitting next to me here. I don't know why I found myself sneaking over in your direction. <laughs> Time. Taylor's going to have to fire up here. We're going to have to see a little bit of Taylor fizz uh, in the next sort of 10 or 15 minutes to see whether he can't just find a way just to insert a little jeopardy into Djokovic's mind that this third set isn't going to get wrapped up convincingly. He has been so impressive under pressure. Backs against the wall, though, in this third set. And a two sets to one deficit against this man doesn't often mean that you're going to come out on top. It would take some performance from there. Oh. And again, you just see Taylor there. Just flexing his left ankle. So tough if you feel like you've got a problem there and you're just not able to load in the way that you need to. Look at this. Oh. vision he has you know I had my eyes on Taylor Fritz in that rally just to really check out his ankle and he covered a lot of court there he, he competed well hit some good shots of his own but when he finally no, no. at the end of the rally got caught behind the baseline and had his body weight moving the wrong way Djokovic hits the drop shot so he gets him back there behind the, out of, and laterally he, his vision sees him and he throws that in. Well, guys, I was just getting ready to say Taylor Fritz has got to watch out serving too many second serves and Novak's backhand because that return is hitting the baseline every time. Yeah. And then sure enough, now he went to the forehand and another return hitting the baseline. So Novak is pinpoint right now. I don't know where else you serve. Body or just acing? <laughs> at this point, it's got to be. At this point, it's got to be aces, guys. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah there goes the body theory. <laughs> you don't need to put an invoice in today, Fitzy. <laughs> this man, however, has put himself up two no, sets to one. Yeah. Well, the pendulum certainly swung, has it? It's balanced for two sets. And it's just taken eight games for it to swing heavily in one uh, direction here.
couple guys, you talk about the illusion of choice. You know, last year at Wimbledon, I was in the gym after Novak won his semifinal match, and 20 minutes later, he was in the gym doing a 30-minute workout of light weights, stretching. You know, you talk about sometimes you win the semifinal. Okay, let's get some rest. You've got the final in a day and a half. No, no, no. This guy went right back to the gym, got right back to work to get ready for the final, and we all know what happened there. Fourteen left. Uh, they'll be looking forward to potentially getting in his recovery pod that's here in Melbourne to uh, recover from this uh, ordeal that he's been in today in terms of the heat. And as he looks forward, if he potentially does get the win today, temperature is going to come out of the air here in Melbourne at the back end of this week. Hang on, did I just see a miss hit? <laughs> I know, I feel like Novak doesn't even know what a miss hit is. That's crazy. Well, guys, when First Novak game. is serving Taylor Four Fritz hands. wide on that deuce side and he's having hit a forehand, that was a very ginger run to his left from Taylor Fritz. And even it felt like almost he couldn't stop. And uh, so we, we got to keep a look on his movement to his left after a wide forehand. They look very ginger. Look at this. Look at that perfect form and function. It's amazing how that has just become such a routine shot for players, isn't it? The loading on the left leg, the sort of the knee flex, and then the explosion up. And then the control mid-air. Yeah, but hang on. They're not all doing it as perfect as that. Not all, but it is amazing how sort of Rios was really the first Please. one. The great Anderson. Chilean player, of course, former world number one, Thank didn't you. win a major, but he kind of brought it in. And then other players have followed suit. He made the final here one once. Marcelo Rios. This is good for his game. All power to Mike Russell. 15, I think as time goes on, he'll, he'll use this more and more because you need different ways to win points. I mean, Novak has it. Roger had it. The, the great players have it. And the really, really good ones do too. You can't just win two or three different ways. Battle of real estate. It's most valuable, of course, uh, out there on the rectangle is if you can get inside the baseline on your terms, not just if you're getting rushed. And Novak in that third set, as you can see, wasn't defending as much, but he was up inside the baseline being extremely productive, taking time away. And if Fritz is struggling with that left ankle, that's going to make him have to move even more dynamically. say you're half a meter behind the baseline on one set 13, and you move 15. half a meter in front of the baseline on the next you you gain two meters because the ball's got to go down the other end and come back and the other and that means the opposition is going to be rushed now i don't know about this injury with with fritz and and it looks like there's something there absolutely most players carry something during matches though i just hope it doesn't and yeah, that didn't look good either nick did it 13. Oh, that's, that's the first time I've really worried about it. Yeah, that, that just wasn't really a bend there. He didn't bend down to get down for that backhand. But, you know, again, I think it's more just the extreme movement to the left when he's really yeah. far to the right coming to the left. I think that's what we have to look for. Well, the problem is if it takes two or three percentage points off your movement, 
against 14, this guy, it's, it's a problem. You need to be at full tilt. It's one thing to have a theory, isn't it? But, you know, mix up your serve, and, and there's been a lot of variety from Taylor's slowest to his medium pace, his average, and his fastest. And, you know, Michael's done a great job here. But, I mean, that's a 178 out of nowhere through the forehand. And Novak's picked that up, no problem. Yeah, and pretty much what, what gets to Taylor a lot is if he's missing too many backhands. We just saw him miss a couple backhands in the last few points, and he's looking at his team like he can't believe it because he never misses backhands in his mind. Yeah, he's in all sorts of trouble. Partly due to the injury, but also uh, Djokovic with a tailwind here. Djokovic. And he may well show him his tail lights at the end of this point. Huge moment. Literally talking about a tail wind because generally the wind comes from this yes. northern end most of the time, not always. So you're just using a figure of speech, Mark. I'm assuming I make most things up. I would have thought after 10 days you would have worked that out, Fitzy. Has he got the best faded forehand return on the juice side down the line uh, ever? Okay. Yeah, he sure does. Jokovic. I mean, he just comes on the inside part of the ball and just curves that thing in there. And, you know, again, as we talked about, so many of those returns going to Taylor Fritz's backhand. I mean, that one just had a little bit more juice to it as well. And moving to the left is not Taylor's friend at the moment. taken an absolute yes. speck of paint hasn't he oh it's a little bit more than that half the ball tattooed onto the line and it keeps him in this fourth set He looked like he almost had the uh, yips Hunting. after he hit that back end, thinking he'd Fritz. missed it. There's a bit of jitterbugging going on there, but he he caught the line, and it's a game of centimeters. Sometimes he's still in it. <laughs> but he, I just sense that he's tiring. Yes. You know, his, his body language after the points is different now. Advantage. Fritz. And he's never not got it. He'll compete to the finish line, right? Whatever limitations he has against the absolute elite, it is not his competitiveness. And he's found a way to hang on to his serve at the start of this fourth, and not many would have. Uh. 
15 uh, I just wonder whether the lack of movement that he has on the return means he should shift his position up onto the baseline and just gamble a little bit more just try and roll the dice on the return shots Gee, it's a good forehand isn't it 15 uh, it oh. really is Again, Novak who's harvested so many good points out wide on this juice side will he go there again and just keep pulling Taylor out, who starts very wide, it has to be said, on his return position, then at times guesses to the left. And that's the problem. That's why I kind of feel, maybe even it's just on the juice side, not on the ad, just to cut that serve off and just take some cuts at the return. Yeah, and if he, if he gets the serve, you know, six inches wrong, just have a swing at it. Maybe. Just optically, I feel as though he's got to give him something different to look at because he is just rolling Novak through these service games. Game Djokovic. And another one for the world number one that is New comfortable. 2-1, fourth set. Djokovic leads by two games to one. Well, I just wonder how aware Taylor is sitting at the changeover, just how dominant Novak has been on serve in the last set and a bit. I'm just having a look at some of the numbers here. He's played 29 first serve points, Novak, in sets three and four, and he's lost just three of those points. 25 on the second serve, the world number one and he's lost just four of those. So it has been a serving clinic for those fans on Rod Laver Arena at the moment from the world number one. So that kind of reality does surely at some stage provoke some sort of reaction from Taylor to do something different. First things first, got to hold on to his serve. Tell you what, guys, the, the sniffles that maybe Novak had in the beginning of this match, early on in the first set, you know, with the cold and kind of battling that, is completely gone. I mean, Novak is moving the best he's moved the entire match, three hours and 20 minutes in now. Oh.
I guess there's always some debate about what is the perfect height and size of a, of a player. They come in different, they come in different uh, levels, don't they? Let's. And you know when, I, when you see a guy as big as well, there we go. He's not happy with that one. Thirty percent. I think a miss hit there that dropped short that he's very unhappy about. It doesn't happen often to him. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he's unhappy about there. I mean, Taylor Fritz went wide on the first serve on the very first point. They went T there, so I don't know if he was saying look for that serve, but Taylor Fritz has been mixing it up well. Fourteen percent. But that serve right there is a serve that Taylor Fritz has been going to anytime he needs a point. The wide one on the ad side. Oh. oh. So when you Taylor Fritz's height. It's inevitable you're probably not going to move as smoothly and as quickly as this guy. He's what, six, two and a half, six, six, three, Novak. Taylor, six, five. And Novak's been getting him a little bit in these latter stages with a short, wide one to his backhand. He takes a big step out there, Taylor, to hit the ground stroke. It's amazing what. 20 centimeters or difference almost makes on a serve isn't it to the outcome on the other side i mean the other one was perfect and he got the he got the free point that one was good it just wasn't quite as great no and it came back with interest geez using it to good effect isn't it I still think when he gets that short ball there and it bounces up, he should go with his big forehand no, because he's taking a risk with a drop shot. But uh, look, all power to him. He's using it. it. It's mixing up the thought processes for Novak. He, he wasn't expecting that then. Good to see. guys at the 30 40 point the 40 30 the one he lost when Novak hit a great return and they got back to deuce Taylor Fritz was very gingerly walking for about four or five steps to get ready for that deuce point so let's keep an eye on kind of how he's walking uh, it almost seemed like he kind of jammed his toe in his in his shoe so it could be a little bit of a toe or ankle type deal going on here thank you Biggest giveaway is Taylor's slice rate on his backhand in terms of having a problem. He sits at around 6% in general for matches over the course of a year. He was at 7% in the first set. Uh, that's about normal. He was down at 2%. He was gripping and ripping in that second set that he won against Novak. He has steadily climbed. He was at 15% slice backhands in the third and 20% slice backhands in the fourth. And what that says is he's not getting out there quickly enough to hit his two-hander. Yeah, his movement's not as good. 
Chasing shadows. Yeah. 14 you know, Nick picked this up a fair while ago, and, and it, it's becoming more apparent. I think he's he's more proppy as the games go by. Yeah, right now it's just so hard for Taylor to push off when he's really pushed wide, really to either side, to be honest. And, you know, obviously Novak is feeling that, and he's going to try to spread him as much as he can. See, that's where I'd like him to just gun a, gun a return. Run in, hit it, crush, rush. He's not winning those baseline Djokovic exchanges from the back of the court. Got to insert something a little bit different. Otherwise, uh, his hopes will diminish, as are the Sun in Melbourne. It's 3-2, Djokovic in the fourth. Beautiful city, as we bring you uh, a little bit more confirmation of what is happening in terms of Taylor Fritz's first serve return hit points. As you can see here, very little yellow balls, which are the ones that are going to be the ones that he wants to see because that will mean he's winning more points than he's losing. But as he's getting pulled out wide, as Nick's been saying, he is virtually winning zero points there. So that's why you feel when you look at that right now that he, could, he, he might as well change it. That's just not a good risk-reward play for Taylor. And therefore, if he moved up, he's virtually not losing anything. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, they're moving up, but then also taking away the wide serve. Why not move over, take Donna. it away, make Novak beat him down the tee or the body? Again, just change it up. While well, we take a quick look at Taylor flexing his uh, left foot out there and a little bit of pain etched on his face. He won't be given up here. I can tell you that Novak got out of his chair there a lot faster than normal. And as you can see, he is already waiting for Taylor to step up to the baseline. There was a purposeful walk from the world number one. This is his moment to strike. And he is often deadly. You almost feel like Taylor's got to take some chances Fifteen, like he did there on the forehand. Just be a little bit more aggressive. The firepower, was, that was a lot bigger. So he's got to get Novak on his back foot instead of Taylor being on his back foot. Let's. Well, the injury accentuates that. Um, I mean, generally speaking, I think that's true too. I mean, you don't want to be defending all the time against Novak. Uh, if you can help, but it's pretty hard not to because he's so good, but you're better off being aggressive, I think, against him. But especially with the this injury now, it's, it's accentuated more. He's got to take more risks, he has to. And what a beautiful way to bring him forward and take him out of his comfort zone there because he is not quite as good in the forecourt as he is at the back. What do you call it here? Swiss Army knife? Leather man? If you're in South Africa, you'd call it a leather man. You know those tools that have every single blade and screwdrivers and bottles, bottle openers? Swiss Army knife, maybe? 
Yeah, guys, that's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, so, well, there, there's different names for, for yeah. different brands, but that's what I look at Novak. That's what I think. I think he's the ultimate one of those. He has every single thing that you need on a tennis court to come off of Victor. That lovely little short slice that he suddenly introduced out of nowhere. Yeah, and he's just razor sharp. This is the crucial time. This is the edge of the cliff, really. 15, uh, 14. And you heard the output there from Novak. Yeah, guys, Novak just went into complete lockdown mode there. Was not going to make a single mistake. And Taylor Fritz bit at the very end. This is the elevated version of Novak Djokovic. When the moment arrives, so does he. Thank you. Dan Djokovic. He is the master of his own destiny. Djokovic and he doesn't do home visits. <laughs> and he's made it happen once again, Fitzy. And off a first serve that was a big one, he hits it within a meter and a half of the baseline. What a what a, a, a backhand this is! The timing it takes to hit that time and time again is quite extraordinary. He knows where that racket face is like no one else. Most of us are just thinking, can I get this back over the net somewhere? Well, not only that, how many times has Taylor taken it to his forehand on those big points and won the point? Oh. And yet changed it up, went huge, as you say, and Novak still pinged it back to the baseline. There's a risk. That's a massive reward for the American. And guys, that's not even really a massive risk for Taylor Fritz. I mean, he has got that one in his bag and he knows it. So let's just see if he can use that throughout the rest of this set. faint presence in Novak's service games for two sets and all of a sudden 
Well, this it, is, but this is the competitive spirit you've talked about. All power to him. Uh, well, it was interesting to see him at Love 30 try and switch directions Novak with his first serve down the tee. Perhaps he feels that he's overserved Taylor's forehand and that the American would have been waiting there. You kind of feel that he'll go back to that place which has won him so many points. Oh. And he hasn't hit many there, and that's perhaps just cost him the opportunity to make a first serve. For perseverance, he deserves that bit of good fortune. We're back on serve in the fourth. There may be some fans outside milling around, getting their third or fourth drink, uh, awaiting the evening session. They maybe disagree with that, but Taylor Fritz certainly won't. He seemingly hasn't used up all his powder yet. A little more ammunition from the American in there. And then the chef's kiss off the net. One fan happy that Taylor has managed to break back, as you can see here outside the evening crowd watching on on the big screens. Excited to see this contest, but equally excited to see the two matches that will be getting underway tonight. Sabalenka, Krachikova, and of course, Senna Rublev for a seventh edition. They are waiting patiently. And that's not a bad place to wait either. No lay fans out there. Will he get it done in four or can Ready Taylor Fritz play. potentially from here take us to a fifth set? feel like the quicker the second serve the worse it is for Fritz at times because it's back onto yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and that second serve just doesn't get up on Djokovic, so it's right in his wheelhouse and he's able to put it right on the baseline. I think especially on the first quarter, it slides into the body or into the backhand rather than biting and kicking high. I guess it's inevitable that after three hours and 39 minutes, the first step is not going to be as quick. It becomes attrition, doesn't it? less animated now at Novak and I think deep down he knows it's like slow death in a way isn't it even though he lost that previous service game I'm not sure his opponent is wounded but he's slowing let's 
boomerang breaks for both players Djokovic firstly for Taylor and then for the 10 time champion here in Australia no respite for Fritz yeah Michael Russell just telling Taylor there stay aggressive that was the game plan coming in stay aggressive if you're going to change to go down the line commit to your shots but now Novak serving for the match. Please, the players are ready. Uh, He's just half a step slower now, isn't he? The big guy. Thank you. Ready for play. So 10 plus aces in five consecutive matches now Novak that's not something that happens too often just the second time he's done that in his career back in 2021 when it seemed a lot quicker has to be said he managed that particular record from the second round to the semi-final In terms of aces, I make this his sixth best match with 20 aces in it in his Grand Slam career. 14, 15. He's been on point when he's needed to be, and that has brought up match point. Thank you. Please, players are running. to an 11th semi-final in Melbourne.
It's taken him over 15 hours to get there. That is the longest mileage he's ever put on the clock to get through to this stage in Australia. But just a couple of matches now separating him from a 25th major title. Well, it wasn't without issues, not for Novak. He had uh, certainly some heat issues at the start. He, he, he's had the cold or the stiffles. We don't quite know exactly what it is, but he, he hasn't been probably 100%. And that was fraught with some danger from this big serving American who I take my hat off to. He, he was admirable, wasn't he? I, I think physically he was drained at the start of the fourth and he, he just lost that momentum. He couldn't go couldn't go Novak at the, with Novak at the end, but an enthralling contest really. Tanner played great all tournament, got his first ever top 10 win at a Grand Slam. Um, so that hugely important for him in terms of the knowledge that that will bring him down the road. I think he was hampered with his left ankle as that match went on. It seemed to get significantly worse, but he's put in another great major. There's no doubt about it. Third time he's been to the quarterfinal stage of a major tournament and he's just gaining obviously from that experience, but he just happens to be playing in an era that has been dominated by some simply phenomenal players and currently is absolutely dominated by this man. It is still his world and he is still the best in it. Well played, Turner Fritz. The 10 time champion got a bit of a scare for a while. And he'll be back. He's just 26 years of age, and you can see how tenderly he is walking up those stairs as well. And he may well have masked that pain from us. As A man that doesn't really need any introduction in these parts, and... This might be a little bit more chaotic for Novak than the match it was itself. Here's the Nick and Novak show. So Novak, I never thought I'd be here, by the way, <laughs> doing this on court interview. Well done. You know, that was a, an incredible performance. You know, Taylor has improved his game so much. You know, he had an 8-0 head-to-head. But, um, you know, you're gunning for an 11th title here. So what, what keeps you going right now in front of these fans? Yeah, I need a mic. Thanks, man. Good to see you, man. Great to see you. Looking good in that booth, but looking better here. Hopefully with a record also soon. Um, yeah. We miss Nick. Come on, guys. Show him some love. Yeah. Uh, what was the question about? Okay, yeah, it was about me. Oh, uh, man. I suffered a lot, uh, first couple of sets, um, also due to his high quality tennis. He was serving well, he was uh, staying close to the line, he, you know, he was really uh, kind of suffocating me from, from, from back of the court. You know, I was, uh, you know, most of the rallies on my back foot, you know, it was really difficult to find the, the right timing. It was extremely hot while the sun was uh, still out there. Uh, yeah, physically very draining, emotionally as well, uh, huge. Round of applause for, for Fritz for a great performance uh, today and also this tournament. He's played amazing tennis. So you were actually zero from 15 break points today and that was the first time ever in your career you weren't able to take one. How were you able to keep bouncing back? And you know, because he was serving great today. I sat in that box for four hours, by the way, commenting, you were blowing me kisses and you were sticking your tongue out. But yeah, zero from 15. How'd you keep bouncing back? Felt, felt like playing you, man, with your serve. Um, I mean, Taylor, we all know Taylor has got one of the best serves in the world. Uh, he's had one of the best serves for many years. And when he's feeling it, I, I saw him playing Tsitsipas a few days ago, and he was serving extremely well. So I knew the, the kind of a threat he, uh, he poses when, when he serves uh, on such a high quality. Yeah, uh, conversion of the break points was really poor. I saw, I think it was four for 21 today, but I think 
in the end of the day, uh, I managed to break him when, when it mattered, you know, in the third and the fourth. Uh, I think I upped my game probably in midway to the third set all the way to the end. I served extremely well. I think I had probably more, even more aces than he did, mm. which is uh, a surprise stat, but, you know, it, it helped a lot, obviously, in this kind of, this kind of matchup. So your next match is either. So your next match is either between Yannick Sinner or Andre Rublev, and you're going to keep them here till late tonight. By the way, because they're still going to be playing tonight. Are so you doing that match? No, no, no. I'm going. I'm going to bed. Okay. But um, yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, some. You know, Sinner had some success against you to the end of last year, but I mean, some two young guns there. Hello. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh... Yeah, different matchup. Obviously, uh, both Sinner and Rublev are in great form. You know, I, I watched uh, Rublev the other night against Deminor. I mean, five sets, uh, some of the quickest uh, exchanges, <laughs> grueling exchanges I've, I've seen uh, in Rod Laver Arena in years. Uh, you know, they both played incredible tennis. Sinner, he's probably playing tennis of his life. Mm. You know, he had a fantastic ending uh, of the last season. and. We had a couple of great encounters in Torino, also Davis Cup, um, very close ones, uh, going 7-6, 7-5 in the third. So, um, yeah, I can expect him to play always on the highest level, but look, let's uh, get some popcorn, you and I, we, put a, we chill on the sofa and uh, we enjoy them, enjoy the match and watch them play. Uh, last, last question, because I know I'm probably never going to do this ever again. So I know there's a tree in the Bota Royal Botanical Gardens that you go to and you hug and I don't know what you do. But can you just show me which tree that is? Because I need to get healthy because I'm sick of you winning on this court. And I just want to come back maybe once and beat you one time. Yeah. Show me the tree. Where's the tree? Okay, I'll show you the tree, but you can't tell anyone. It's a big secret. So what you got to do is take off your shoes, climb the, the tree, the highest point, and hang upside down on one of the highest branches for 33 minutes and, and three seconds. And you're going to win a slam. <laughs> All right, guys, Novak Djokovic, give it up. He's into the quarterfinals, semifinals.